time when I could sit on the floor and just pop right up. That time, as we say, has passed. <laughs> How many of you sat down a little confused? How many of you sat down a little bewildered? How many of you have ever heard the Holy Spirit referred to as she? I spent several hours over the years going through Hebrew and Greek grammar, realizing that the word for spirit in Hebrew is ruach, which is a feminine noun. The word for Greek, the word for spirit in Greek is pneuma, which of all things is a neuter noun. But the important thing is that the verbs that refer back to those nouns are all feminine. And so on this day, when we don't preach the Hallmark calendar, but we certainly recognize with the rest of the world that this is a day devoted to moms, and not just moms because we gave birth, but moms because we are aunts and cousins and teachers and loving companions with others. This is a day that we recognize those gifts that women of all times have given to us. And so happy Mother's Day to all of us. And now brothers and sisters in Christ, friends and family in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father, the almighty, powerful, but unseen creator and lover of all that exists. From God who came into the world in our own human form, our flesh and blood, that we might see and know the Father experience the Father's love, and do the Father's will. And from God, the Spirit, who is given to us as a gift that we may live in relationship to the Father and the Son and continue the work begun by our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Do you see yourself? Are you living being, as Luther says, little Christ in and for the world? Now, confession time, I love to watch TV commercials. And, uh, I know, some are pretty routine and some are boring, but every now and then, there's one, there's one rare one that has something within them that's a real message about who we are as a people and what we need or want. Now, from a very long time ago, I remember this commercial. Picture it with me. Two women, supposedly sisters, 30-ish, mothers shopping in, of course, a Hallmark store, getting ready for Easter. Excitedly, one picks up this cute little something or other and looks at the other and says, isn't this perfect? We could da 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 da. The other one replies just as excitedly and looks at, look at and says, look at this. Isn't this perfect for da 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 And then there's silence as the two women stare at each other in shock. Then they give a little laugh and proclaim in unison, <laughs> we've become our mother. <laughs> True, isn't it? We do in so many ways become our mothers or our fathers, those with whom we have close relationships, those who love us and teach us, those we love and admire, those we respect and seek to emulate, those we choose to follow. Now, if you've already gotten that connection with the text, I will stop here. But I'd rather not. So let's put it into context. Today's scripture text is set in that last night Jesus was with his disciples. The night of the Last Supper, the night in which he was betrayed. Though they did not suspect it, he knew. He knew what would be coming, the shock the fear, the loss, the grief, the disorientation they would experience. And he speaks to them as a loving parent, 
preparing them for what was to come in the future, preparing them as the writer of John now prepares us for how we will live in relationship with Jesus as Jesus' disciples, his followers did in a world that no longer can see or hear him. Therefore, Jesus introduces them to the Holy Spirit, the gift that will come from God to empower and guide them to step into Christ's shoes and continue Christ's work in the world that God created and that God loves. Jesus says to them, I will ask the Father and he will send you another advocate, another helper, another parakletos, another. Did you catch that? If there's another coming, who is the first? It is Jesus. Jesus is the first helper, the first advocate, the first paraclete, comforter, guide. First to make God the Father, the creator, the lover of all, and God's dream for all of God's people, abundant eternal life in relationship with God, seeable and knowable on this earth. You see, this is the gospel of John, where the cross is not humiliation, but glory and exaltation where Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and ascension are one continuous salvific work so that we may know the Father and continue the work God first entrusted to Jesus. We are, as theologian and preacher David Lowe says, left behind. And I quote, Jesus leave, but we stay. As it turns out, this is the ultimate left behind story. But according to Jesus, being left behind is neither a sign of imperfect faith nor a chance to prove yourself worthy. Rather, being left behind is an honor, an invitation to participate in the glory of the Father, a commissioning, in fact, into the work of the Son, eternal life, glory, relationship with God. In John's gospel, these aren't things waiting out there somewhere, but instead are all around us now. Where, we may ask? It is in doing what Jesus does. Healing, feeding, caring, listening, sharing, making manifest the grace and mercy of God who so loved the world. Brothers and sisters, because of the Holy Spirit, we are never out of relationship with God. We may be left behind, but we are never orphans. Again, this is John, where the disciples received the Spirit not on Pentecost 50 days after the resurrection, nor on Ascension 40 days after the resurrection, but on Easter evening when Jesus comes among them and breathes the Holy Spirit upon them that they may relate to and recognize him throughout his resurrection appearances and have him with them from this day forever. Easter, therefore, is not the culmination of God's work, nor is it the only good news, nor the end of the story, as in, yay, we get to go to heaven when we die. No. Easter, the resurrection, is the exciting announcement, proclamation, proof that God has conquered death and we are free. Free to live in relationship with God as Jesus did. Free to spread the revolutionary words of love and forgiveness, grace, hope, and peace. Free to do the mighty acts of God, feeding, healing, accepting, honoring all. God's people as Jesus did. Jesus' return to the Father makes possible the gifting of the Spirit who ensures that this life of Jesus lived through us and which we cannot claim for ourselves is possible so that others may come to know Jesus 
as Savior and Lord and experience his love, grace, mercy, and power as we have. Luther explains that this way in his explanation to the third article of the Creed, which Herb Plain still remembers from confirmation. <laughs> Luther writes, I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy, and kept me in the true faith. Just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. And did you notice? The key is love. It's the greatest and, in fact, the only commandment that Jesus gives in the Gospel of John. Love one another as I have loved you. And notice how it surrounds these words about the Spirit who fills us with Jesus' love and guides us to live and be like him. Last night, like so many others who post on Facebook, I put on a picture of my mother. When I looked at it again, I gasped at noticing how much I have her eyes. Today, my friends from childhood who knew her will likely comment about how much I look like her and am like her. And this made me wonder, if I, if we, each posted a picture of Jesus. Would people all comment to us how much we are like him? Given the Holy Spirit in our baptisms to reveal Jesus to us, to teach and to inspire, to guide and to empower, to convict us and move us to action, I pray that certainly they would. How about you? Amen. I think we have a hymn to sing. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> 